Hey guys, it's going to do here. I'm back with another video. Now, today is quite an interesting one. I guess it's an urban legend, but at the same time, it's grounded in a lot of fact and a lot of tragedy. So I am talking about Epping Forest, more specifically the suicide pool of Epping Forest. Now, Epping Forest is on the border of London and stretches, I believe, from London into Essex. It is around 19 kilometers long and around four kilometers wide. This is a pretty substantial forest. Now, it has a very dark and interesting history, including a lot of highwaymen back in the 18th century. These highwaymen were notorious for preying on the rich race-goers who were in their carriages on the way to Newmarket. It also sheltered very famous highwaymen such as Dick Turpin and Tom King. Not only has it been a haven for highwaymen and criminals over the years, because of how dense it is, it is a very popular location for murderers to dispose of their victims. Also, murderer of three policemen, Harry Roberts, hid in Epping Forest for a short time before he was apprehended back in 1966. There is a whole list of murders that have taken place in Epping Forest, which I will get into, but first, the suicide pool of Epping Forest. What's that all about? So as I said, Epping Forest is around 19 kilometers long, four kilometers wide, and it houses hundreds of ponds and lakes. However, there is only one pond in there that gets the name Suicide Pool. The story begins around 300 years ago when it is believed that two lovers were taking a stroll through the forest and they were being followed by someone. And it turned out that this person that was following them was the father of the girl. Now the father was so angry and so disproving of their love that he actually drowned his daughter in the pool. Now apparently her lover was so overcome with emotion that in that moment he decided to commit suicide and himself drowned in the suicide pool. Now apparently not long after this, the pool kind of took on a life of its own. It went all black and dark. You couldn't see below the surface and all of the edging began to wilt and die away. Any fauna or foliage in the immediate vicinity would no longer grow and would die. Any wildlife nearby would mysteriously die around the pool's edges. And it was from here the body started to appear in the pond. In 1887, a woman apparently committed suicide in the pool. Not long after that, Emma Morgan killed herself and her child. Now, over the years, many people have died at the suicide pool in Epping Forest. Apparently, it calls out to you. It yearns for you to come and take your final swim. The Lawton and District Historical Society put out a letter about this pond, this pool in Epping Forest, and it reads as follows. There used to be talk of a suicide pool in Epping Forest, and a letter in the Essex countryside in 1959 requested information on its whereabouts. In a subsequent edition of the journal, another correspondent suggested that she was sure the pond in question was the Wake Valley Pond, which may have acquired this reputation. However, a third letter writer derided this suggestion, claiming to know exactly where the pernicious waters were situated. The good lady refused point blank to divulge the exact location, insisting that it was too wicked and dangerous a place to reveal the truth. Her letter includes the following. The suicide pool is deep in the heart of the forest, Far from any road, birds are never heard, squirrels and deer shun its vicinity. No one fishes there, for there are no fish. It is dank, evil and malignant, with an atmosphere unpleasant beyond description. I doubt if the sunshine ever penetrates through the surrounding trees. If it did, it would never lighten the black waters. Those who visit the pool, however sceptical they may have been about the supernatural, always come running away after a short time, unless they end up dead in its waters, as many mysteriously do. These tragedies happen before the second World War. Elliot O'Donnell's Haunted Britain of 1948 gives further information as he claims to have a first-hand experience of it. So, said 1948 journal entry from O'Donnell states, this pool 
which is 10 feet deep and very weedy in places, has been the scene of many mysterious tragedies, whence it derives its name. People who have been thought by their most intimate friends to have no inclination to commit suicide have been found drowned in the pool. I've done several nocturnal vigils by the pool, and although I visualised no ghost, I more than once sensed a mixture of influences in its atmosphere, and the near proximity of unearthly presences, some very miserable, and others definitely evil. There is another entry here that simply says no one knows where exactly the pond is located and it doesn't show on any map. But my advice would be don't go swimming in Epping Forest because you never know what lurks below the surface of the dark and muddy water. So that is the mystery, the tale, the folklore behind the suicide pool of Epping Forest. But like I said, Epping Forest has a very dark and murderous history. There's a lot of murders that took place in that forest. In 1966, Marion Hartley, a 15-year-old schoolgirl, was killed by Joseph Keeley, 20. Keeley dragged Hartley into the forest late at night in the Chingford area, where he sexually assaulted her and strangled her after she had been to a school dance. In 1970, the bodies of Susan Blatchford, 11 years old, and Gary Hanlon, 12 years old, were discovered in a copse on Lil Pitts Hill. After they went missing from their homes in Enfield, North London, in March of 1970, the case was to be known as the Babes in the Woods murder. 30 years later, Ronald Jebson, already serving a life sentence for the 1974 murder of eight-year-old Rosemary Papa, confessed to the murders. In 1981, the thin decomposed six foot body of a white European man aged between 30 and 40 was found in the undergrowth in the forest. He had a money belt containing English and Spanish money and wore a watch costing approximately 40 pounds. The body to this day remains unidentified. In 1989, Terence Gooderham, an accountant, and his girlfriend Maxine Arnold were both killed in a hitman style slaying whereby they were both shot with a double barrel shotgun. Although unsolved, it has been reported in the press that James Moody, described as Britain's most notorious hitman, may have been responsible for the killings. Although he was also murdered a few years later, it has been further suggested in the press that Gooderman was targeted because he creamed off a quarter of a million in drugs money, that he was involved in laundering, and that the hit was organised by the Adams family criminal organisation, which is also known as Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate. 1990, Patricia Parsons, who ran a massage parlour, was found dead in her car, having been shot in the head with a crossbow. It was suggested that she had a black book of clients that was subject to contract killings following the possibility that she was going to sell details to the newspaper. The murder remains unsolved. 2000, Wendy Woodhouse, 31, was taken to the forest in Essex, stripped, tortured and beaten to death with a snooker cube by two men who thought she had cheated them in a drugs deal. Courtney Peters, 28, an illegal immigrant from Jamaica and Ewing Thomas, 25, of Stoke Newington, North London, were jailed for life for her murder at the Old Bailey. 2004, the remains of Ivor Willis, who had been missing for two years, were found on Wanstead Flats. 2003, the body of a person aged 40 years or more was found in the forest. Experts could not identify the person's sex as the body was believed to have been there for up to 20 years. The body remains unidentified. Two in 2005, we have Shah Afraj Ali, 40, who was lured to the forest and stabbed before his body was burned by his younger lover, Joygen Nessa, 27, and her brother, Azor Khan, 18, in 2005. Another murder of Rafael Zapzik, who was found after passers-by heard gunshots with ballistic wounds to the head at Wake Arms. He died later in hospital. The body remained unidentified for several months until the family in Poland recognised mortuary pictures that had been released by police. It is not believed that these killers have ever been found. In 2015, Scotland Yard launched a murder inquiry after the boy of Hadir Aksakal was found close to Hollow Ponds, Leighton Stone, on 9th of September. So there have been a lot of murders in the last 50, 60 years alone, as well as all of the highwayman history, but it also has a very rich history of royals as well, which I'm not going to go into today. But yeah, so what do you think about Epping Forest? What do you think about the suicide pool of Epping Forest? What do you think of this? I don't know how to describe it. Would you guys say this is an urban legend? Let me know down below. I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, share and subscribe. Plenty of ways down below to support me if you'd like to do that. Best thing is come back next time when I have another video. Thank you guys. See you very soon. Sweet one. Geese.